down to each core, down to each spare bones. And in doing so, we're going to really break it down into what our mantra is, which is decide, commit, succeed. We're asking you to make a decision. We're asking you to then commit to it, to a plan, and that's what we're going to talk about today. And then hopefully everyone succeeds. Now, I want to take you back to December of 2014. And in December, if you're ever on a Zoom call, there's this word that keeps coming back. It's two words that keep coming back all the time. So you must have heard either one of the regional sales team or one of you use it. It's finish strong. Finish strong. So I was doing a call for Sarah Tri. Any of Sarah Tri's coaches here? So maybe you were on that call. And I'm presenting, and, and obviously I talk about finishing strong. And I used an example, and the example that I used is running a marathon. And I said, if you're running a marathon, and you're looking at the finish line, it doesn't matter how fast you've come to that finish line or how slow, you're gonna finish strong, right? So that was a nice analogy, and everybody was fired up, bumped up, hopefully you guys did what you had to do. And so after I was done with that, Sarah gave me a call. And she said, Arno, thank you so much. I appreciate the time. And then she says, Arno, um, have you run a marathon? And I said, no. <laughs> she was calling me on the carpet, right? So at that very moment, I knew I had one of two choices. I could have just crumbled and said, I'm not going to do this. This is too hard. I have never run a marathon. Or I could say, I'm going to do it. I have no idea how I'm going to make it happen, but I'm going to do it. So I'm going to take you back to... Um, it was back in, uh, actually, the very same NLC last year, I, I made a commitment. Now, let's switch back to Elite. Elite, to some of you, might be something that you haven't done. Some of you are Elite and Premier coaches, but to some of you, you haven't, you haven't gotten to Elite, okay? And you well, might have, like, that scary thing. Of these coaches, if yeah. you don't know, there's 466 of you that are here. There's 110 Premier coaches, and there's 86 elite coaches, and that's absolutely incredible. So, you know, that, that's a huge accomplishment yeah, for those guys. Absolutely. So, so I don't know what elite represents for you. Me running a marathon was challenging myself and proving to Sarah that I can do it, right? So elite represents a lot of things to you. Uh, you have to obviously decide. There's a lot of things why you want to be an elite coach. Maybe you want your own branded guitar. Right? Maybe you want to hang out with Sean T and all the cool trainers, right? Maybe you want an insight into what we do as a company, hang out with all the corporate executives, Michael, Jeff, Carr. Uh, maybe you want to be on stage. Anybody see themselves on stage? Yep. Right. Maybe that's that. Maybe you want to be a top 10 coach like Bonnie Angle, or you want to walk across the stage with your spouse. I don't know what that represents to you, but Doug, maybe some of them. Want to be a top 10 or a top coach? Well, and I would add to you that elite is more than just all of these you know, neat things that get to happen. I mean, certainly there's no lines at Summit. You know, we take care of you every chance we get. Uh, yeah, exactly. You know, that, that line to the core, you get to bypass that one. But I would tell you that probably the biggest why elite to me is this idea of you guys gaining confidence. You, know, you each know that new coaches that come in have a very low level of confidence. So we've got to help them increase their confidence. But I would tell you that elite coaches literally enter the room differently. That these guys are now elite 2015 coaches. We will celebrate them the entire year of 2016. And the confidence, absolutely, the confidence that you guys have is incredible because of what you've accomplished. Absolutely. So the next part is we're going to ask you to, to make a public commitment. And I remember this very moment. It was at NLC. It was last year. And I said, I will be a 2015 marathon finisher. And then I went backstage and crapped my pants. <laughs> I had no idea how I was going to do it. But I was so excited. There's a couple suckers that joined me. That yeah. Sure. <laughs> I did it too. So did Kim Carver. Yeah, yeah, we're so suckers. Sometimes you get so excited about a goal and you're just like an idiot on fire and everybody just wants to be a part of it. It's like your brand new coach and they sign up for your challenge. They have no idea what a challenge back is, but they sign up. I was fortunate enough to have Kim Carver back there and Doug Moss. So we want to ask you today to make a public commitment. Not only to your team, but to strangers over here, to your regional sales team, 
to, to say that you will be a 2016 elite coach. Now, what we're going to talk about now, next is the plan. We want to share a plan that we feel that if you use it, you will absolutely be a 2016 coach. So the plan that, that we had, we literally went online. Actually, Doug Moss went online and said, marathon training for beginners. And as you can see there, that is the actual paper that we had hung up in our offices. And that was the plan. Now, notice that there's an arrow at week three. Everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face, right? And so we had a plan, but we really didn't even start running until week three, right? Anybody, anybody do that? I have a plan, and you don't, you don't execute on the plan? That's okay. We still made it happen. So what we want to talk about now, not, it's not marathon training, is the elite plan, how they're going to be a 2016 elite coach. So every top coach will tell you that there's a moment they made the decision, and then there's the moment when they got the plan, right? They figured out how they're going to do it. Well, what we now want you guys to do is to commit to the plan, okay? You have to be willing to say, I have a program, I've got it laid, lined out, and I'm going to execute on this program in order for me to be an elite coach. You've all seen the Elite Goal Guide. We're not going to go into it in crazy depth today, but I will tell you it is in the back of your workbook. We put the whole thing in the last page of the workbook, so if you want to reference that today, that'd be great. What we did is we built a goal guide that essentially, the first page lays out just a quick example of what it looks like and how you would fill it out. And then the second page, the back of the document, is then where you go ahead and you populate it. Okay? And we want you to be filling this out, but you, in the beginning of the year, it starts as a goal guide, and throughout the year, we want you to populate it with the actual numbers. So as you get through January, you go back and you raise your, you know, what you did in January as your goal, and we fill it in with the actual numbers so that you can see your own trending towards this goal. Absolutely. So the bottom line, I think, you know, before we go into more details, is you have to be a five-star diamond by December 28th. You have to develop two new personally sponsored diamonds that were not diamond before, and then you have to have 135 points. Okay. So there's three things that you just heard from Melanie that I think are pretty powerful, right? Every coach needs to understand there's three things they have to do to be a successful coach. The first one is you have to earn success club every single month. The second one is you have to recruit and sign new coaches every single month. And the third one is you have to duplicate yourself and you've got to be able to teach your coaches to hit success club. And now what's interesting about this is this idea of these three simple things that really do make up the, the compensation plan, how we pay, how we recognize people. I will tell you that our top 10 coaches are just better at these three things than other coaches. They do these three things more aggressively, that they have more coaches being brought in, but not just recruiting, they're also getting more of their personally sponsored coaches to hit success club. And you've got to figure out how you're going to bring a coach into the network and then teach them what success club is and then get them to hit success club. But also as this process duplicates in your business, this is where the elite points come from. And you'll see that, you know, the, the reason that I have Premier there is that Premier, there's no caps on the program, right? You guys understand from the Elite Goal Guide that you get points for Success Club and it's capped at 61. You get points for PSPB that's capped at 61. And you get points for ATV that's capped at 40. So that the Elite really is the sweet spot where these three things come together. Whereas Premier, there's no caps. That's why it's represented that way. Okay, so we want to get into how you earn the points. So you want to take this Yeah, so success club. Piece of cake. You have to hit success club every single month. And then what you do is you need to understand who your 2015 coaches are that you recruited last year and the coaches that you're recruiting this year. Those coaches, when they hit success club, you get one elite point. Okay, so if you have three of your coaches hit success club, or in this example, four of your coaches hit success club that you recruited either last year or this year, and then you hit success club, what we do when you hit it is we double it. So you got four points when they hit it. We check the box that says, yep, I hit it. That's eight elite points. That's why hitting success club personally is so important. You do not want to leave those four points on the table. 
So the, the key here is to make sure that you understand your, your audience and the people that you're working with. Bottom line, if you're going to be an elite coach, your 2015 coaches and 2016 coaches are going to be coaches you spend a lot of time with. So you've got to be very clear on that. Now, PV is one that confuses a lot of people. But the easiest way to look at that is you look at your group of 2016 coaches, you add up their personal volume, personal volume generated by their customers, that gives you kind of your elite PV point. For every 500 PV point generated by that group of coaches, 2016 coaches, you get one elite point, okay? So the key really, it ties right back into helping your 2016 coaches achieve success for five years. Well, and, and before we jump forward, let me make a point here. Guys, understand that PV comes from your 2016 elite coaches. What that means is you have to be recruiting and you have to be recruiting now. Right? If you recruit a coach in January of 2016, they count towards this category for 12 months. If you recruit a new coach in November of 2016, they count for two. Okay, so that means you have to be actively, aggressively recruiting coaches right now. That's why Team Cup is next month. If you're not on a team, you're crazy. You need to get registered, and you need to get as many of your coaches on teams. Because recruiting, goes hand in hand with becoming an elite coach. You have to be having coaches sign up in that first quarter. January, February, and March are absolutely key to your opportunity to be an elite coach. To simplify, I'm always going, it's a four by four formula. You sign up four coaches, help four coaches uh, get to success. But sign up four, four, four by four, that it usually works really well. The last, last one is the advancement team point, ATV. Now this is the one where everybody goes, oh, I got a new ATV. ATV is awarded to you by incrementally increasing your, your um, 2015 team volume incremental to your 2016 team volume. And every time 2016 is 10,000 points higher than 2015, you get one elite point, okay? So let me just describe this quickly. The first two categories have a cap of 61 points in those categories. We're trying to get to 135 points. So if I cap the first category in Success Club, and I cap the second category in PSPV, 61, 61, I'm at 122. The minimum number of ATV points I have to create is 13, because 13 would get me to 135, okay? That means you have to grow your business by 130,000 um, incremental ATV. And I want you to kind of take that down, and you're going to go, holy cow, how am I going to do that? The way you're going to do that is the three things we talked about. You're going to hit success club, you're going to sign coaches, and you're going to get them to hit success club. And if you'll follow that formula, this one will happen. I mean, it's not a guarantee by any means, but this is the, this is the formula that we don't really tell you to, to you know, really kind of dive into this in January. When we get to you know, July and August, we start to really look at your ATV to understand what's going to happen, what are you projecting. But if you're doing these first three activities and the first two point categories, this one generally will take care of itself. Yeah, to be very clear, if you focus on just success club and PV, this one takes care of itself. So what we thought we would do is show you with exactly 136 elite points, right? So they had a good Christmas. <laughs> they were uh, pushing uh, towards the very end of 2016. You'll notice on the first uh, under cap the category of success club, they essentially had an average of four coaches that were that were helping that they were helping achieve success club. So they went up and down from three four with a high of six and six in August uh, and July, but they had on average four coaches achieve success club. The next category down, which is PV, an important one as well, is it shows you how many coaches they were signing up. And on, they, had, they ended up with 28 coaches, so this is a coach that was not as aggressive as we'd like them to be. They were signing up about two coaches, 2.3. So two coaches ended with 25 points in ATV and now are an elite coach. So you can see the four, two, and then 25. They really focus on success club and PV, and they became an elite coach, and obviously advanced Five star and develop two new diamonds. That's right. So the next case study is going to show fast progress. Okay, this is a coach that on average um, had 9.33 coaches hitting successful. They started the year with seven. They ramped it up. They had you know good things going on. But you can see that over the course of the year, what happened with their success club coaches. 
I can tell you that if you're starting the year now, you need to understand who they are, how many coaches you're going to have, but also pay attention to how are you going to ramp it up? You know, we mentioned you, you have to have at least 61 points in this category. If you average three, well, three times two would be six times 12 would be 72. You would cap the category with just three. Okay. This coach actually obviously capped the category, earned 224 points in the SC category. And in the second category, look at their recruiting. Their PD numbers in January, I'm sorry, their recruiting numbers in January, they signed two coaches in January, and then went to five to nine, but they averaged 7.08 coaches per month recruited by them during the course of uh, 2015. So understand that it, it isn't like you have to blow up and do 30 coaches a month. Right? You have to do a certain level of activity, but if you're tracking it and you understand what everything is, you know, how it's working together to get you to elite, then that's how this all kind of combines and gets you there. So, yeah, this represents um, a faster pace to get to elite. Awesome. And the, re the reason why we're sharing the top 200, obviously everybody understands, or if you don't, uh, every single elite coach qualifies to receive a $100 monthly bonus if you achieve success about five in the month, and you're also a paid five-star diamond one week out of the month. That's for every coach. For those of you that are shooting for the top 200, you get an extra $400 that kicks in for a total of $500 um, if you're an elite coach and you're in the top 200. So number one goal is become an elite coach. The next one could be to top 200, and then the rest is, uh, is up to you how far you wanna, you wanna push. Okay. So the call to action on this one, we want you to get the Elite Goal Guide and we want you to get it filled out, okay? And then we want you to send it in to your regional team so that the regional teams have a copy of your Elite Goal Guide. You know, where we track it, there's accountability, it'll help you. The other thing, you know, that, that will happen when you submit that to us is we can do conversations with you and make sure that you're on track, understand how it is, you're, where you're spending your time, what you're focused on, and so please fill out the Elite Goal Guide. The second thing is you need to understand who your 2015 and 2016 coaches are. So make sure that you're really understanding how those guys come into play as far as personally sponsored coaches hitting success club. And then set a goal that you're going to, at a minimum, try to sign four coaches per month, like Arnold had mentioned, and try to get four coaches hitting successful every single month. You know, we, we, you know we, we talk about the top ten coaches. You know, Melanie did a phenomenal presentation telling you guys exactly how she builds this business. And I think sometimes, you know, we take these top ten and we put them up on this pedestal, and, and they are. They're just outstanding with the numbers that they create. But I really want you to understand, I had a conversation with a, a top 10 coach and she said, man, my team is um, looking at the way I approach this and they say, I just can't do what you do. And it becomes this kind of dilemma that the top coach is so good that I can't keep up with it. I hope you guys understand that the top coaches in the network are hitting numbers that are astronomical. But in order for you to be elite, right, you have to do, on some cases, less than 10% of what they're producing. Okay, so I don't want you to get overwhelmed with, man, I gotta keep up with Melanie Mitchell, or I gotta keep up with Amy Silverman. Understand that elite, we need you to get 135 points. You need to average over, just over 11 elite points a month. And there, it's more weighted towards the end of the year when ATV kicks in. But just understand how that all kind of relates and how that plays in. Yeah. So we still got to tell the marathon story, exactly the journey, right? We're like painting the picture of the end goal, but we know that the journey is where the rubber meets the road, right? You've got a plan. Yeah, like I said, you've got the plan until you get punched in the face. You know, you really don't understand what it takes. And so we had the plan, the marathon plan, and anybody that is a runner at all, like 5K, 10K, marathons, okay, so you guys get it, okay? So. The morning of the marathon, we've been training for two and a half months, some of us four months, and we show up and it's like cold and it's 5.30 in the morning and we're going, why in the world are we here? Why did we sign up for this? And there's people stretching that have been there since 1 a.m. And we're, we're going, oh, that's what we're supposed to do. Okay. And you start sizing people up, right? You start looking around. The Cole Garrison game, anybody do that? Yeah? As a coach, never? Okay, you're lying. So you start doing that and you start sizing people up and you're going, I'm running faster than you. Okay, you look like Kenyan. I'm pretty sure you're gonna get there. 
I'm Kenyan. No, I'm not Kenyan. I'm gonna be five hours. Okay, so you look around and stuff, right? You stop preparing yourself. And funny thing happens is you gear up for it and you start looking at your 26.2 and you say, let's just control step after step. You guys have heard that. Let's just put one foot in front of the other. So here's how the race day went. First seven miles for you guys and your businesses, it's like January through April. Everybody wants to lose weight. It's like, sign me up. I want to be a coach. I want to lose weight. So we're just, it's a good pace, right? We're feeling pretty good, right? Seven miles. And then we hit mile 13, which is a halfway point. And Doug and I are doing what? We took selfies. Selfies. Yeah, we went underneath the whole banner yeah. and took a selfie. We, we, we committed to a lot of coaches that we we're going to do it. So we're taking selfies, we're celebrating. And for those, some of you get to summit, and what do you do? You celebrate like you've already reached the end line, yeah? It's like Sprite Summit, and you're celebrating. It's like, wait, I'm not done yet. We still have six more months. So what we did is we completely changed our activities on mile 13. We stopped, we took out our music, we drank Gatorade and oranges and ate bananas and water and two selfies and pictures and all that. It wasn't until five miles down the road, at mile 18, and at some point, I'm telling you, in your elite journey, you're gonna hit mile 18. What mile 18 is for Doug and I was, was hell. <laughs> All those oranges and bananas and water and Gatorade came out faster than he came in, okay? I think the young people would call it, we were Gatorade wasted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna hit that. You're gonna hit a point in your journey where you go, am I cut out for this? Should I keep pushing? Why am I doing this? Why should you do this? Your husband is gonna tell you that. Your best friend will, and you're gonna have you're going to be tested. You're going to be tested. You're going to have to look back at this moment where you made a public commitment and say, this is worth it. See, what we're telling you is being an elite coach, like Doug said, is absolutely worth it. Every single of these elite coaches this year will tell you it was worth it. Now, what you need to be intentional about is planning your year. What we have here is we don't want you guys to race alone. By the way, We've got a phenomenal regional sales team. Can we give it up one more time for the sales team back there? You obviously have an amazing uplines. You want to be in touch with them. Now, what we're doing here is what we call the flywheel effect. That's what Jeff talked about earlier. As you look around it, it's just a flywheel. At the very top there is January, right? Around there, you see all those big circles? Those are levers you should be using to push yourself Forward. Those are levers like the New Leader Conference today, January Super Saturday, April Super Saturday, the Cruise Summit, Top Secret, that's really going to be big. Then you've got Top Secret in November. So as you look at your calendar, be intentional about it, and that don't just up. plan every single month the same. The months are not created the same. That's right. February is a big month you need to take the opportunity to really impact your business in February. So where we're going to go now is to succeed. And we want you to understand that you're making this commitment now that you're going to hit success clubs every single month. Okay? We want you to qualify for leadership. We want to see you there um, in October or whatever it is, October. September, October. We want you all to be there. And if you're already five star or above, we want you to be there at a higher rank. Okay? And then we want you to be 2016 elite. And we really want you to understand what it takes to be elite. So if you have questions, please reach out to your regional team. And I'm gonna challenge you this. The first year you hit elite is fantastic, it's phenomenal. But you also then need to start talking about who are my personally sponsored elite coaches, right? When you start to really look at your business, understand the value of a personally sponsored elite coach. And, and so you guys that have hit elite, it isn't like, yeah, I got it, no big deal, I'm elite, I got it done. Now it's, you're starting to build those personally sponsored elite coaches. Yeah, absolutely. So I can tell you this, Doug, you know, that mile 18 was rough. It was terrible. It was horrible. Well, mile 23 was worse, but yeah. Yes. Mile 26, I tell you what, despite every single leg cramp we had, every 
I won't mention stuff that happened. Every single mile, every single knee joint that was aching. Even that lady, that 70 year old lady in the big two 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 that passed, passed us. At mile 16. We passed her like twice. But then she was gone. I know. It was still worth it because at the end of the day, Doug, Kim, and I can sit here and say we are 2015 Marathon Fans. Ago, we got a special chance, the sales team and all of us got a chance to call and congratulate a few of the elite coaches. Uh, it was just magical. Uh, we captured some of those moments and so we thought that we would share that with you and hope that we made the same call next year in January of 2017 that you, 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 all of you, in 2016 elite coaches. So let's roll the tape. Thanks guys. Thank you guys so much. 